the Nation with CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent Bob Schieffer. And now from Washington, substituting for Bob Schieffer, Harry Smith. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you all panel here in, uh, in uh, Washington for joining us. And Michelle Bachman uh, joins us this morning from Minneapolis. Well, the 112th Congress is uh, set to convene on Wednesday, but I want to go back a little bit and talk about the last workings of the 111th with you, Michelle. In particular, that the year ended with this deal on taxes and an extension of unemployment benefits. Would that deal have been made with the Congress that's about to take uh, uh, convene on Wednesday? Well, that's a good question. There was a diversity of opinion on this bill. I voted against it because I was concerned about it not being paid for. It also blows a $111 billion hole in the Social Security Trust Fund. There is no money in that trust fund, so they have to go to the General Treasury, where there's also no money. That means an additional borrowing for that $111 billion, in addition to the $57 billion for unemployment. So we're, we're continuing to go down the road that we've gone down before, which is spending money that we don't have. And that's really, I think, one of the strongest messages that we took away from the election in November. Stop spending money that you don't have. Is the uh, Republican Party in this new Congress, is it a House divided? No, I really don't think it is. I think we're very, I think we're, we're fairly unified, but of course, you know, we, we won't all necessarily be agreeing on everything, but I think you see a very, fairly cohesive group that we, we have a uh, singularity, singularity of purpose and that we want to be able to get the budget in order. I think that's really job number one because we want to see the economy shift so that we have a focus on private job creation. I want to uh, go to Congressman Weiner. A couple of weeks ago, uh, we had a conversation. You told me that if the uh, president extended a finger of bipartisanship, that it would cost him a pound of flesh. How do you see this new Congress working with, with the president? And are Democrats all but irrelevant from now on? Well, look, we'll see. I mean, we've already seen on this show there's disagreement among Republicans about the tax cut bill, and I think that there are going to be disagreements to come. I mean, many of them campaigned on the idea of privatizing Social Security. They campaigned on the idea of, of making Medicare a voucher program so seniors don't have a guaranteed health care. I want to see what it is they're in favor of. I mean, we've heard a lot about what they're against in this campaign. I don't know what they're in favor of. You know, we Democrats are, are prepared to work with them where we can, but we're going to challenge them and fight against them where they must. It is not a subject of compromise for many Democrats privatizing Social Security. We just don't believe that's a good idea. Eliminating Medicare as a guaranteed benefit for seniors, we don't agree with. So those fights are going to happen. As far as the president's interaction, I think he's going to find out that bipartisanship has to be a means. It's not an end. And that if just having a bipartisan deal means a success, that's not right. There has to reflect the values of this country and the constituents that I represent. Mike Kelly, you're the new guy. You're going to uh, take your oath on, on Wednesday. You've been around this town for a couple of weeks now. There was a piece in the Washington Post. You said you're not impressed so far. What, <laughs> what do you hope to accomplish when you take office for, well, for real on Wednesday? Yeah, I, I think really when, when you talk about are you impressed or you're not impressed, I, I, I don't think for an average guy, a common guy who comes from a private, uh, private sector, running something for 14 trillion dollars in the red is not impressive you run 14 trillion in the black then i'm impressed what i'm looking for and in bipartisan and, and i and i agree with anthony what he talks about sure is it good to be bipartisan but on good legislation not on not on things just to say we did something in a bipartisan manner just to show that we can we can agree is not good unless it was on something that was good for the whole country so uh, i'm looking to really go to work and work very hard i've worked hard all my life and i've done it with my own money uh, I've had my own skin in the game, so I'm kind of interested to seeing when you get into a situation where really it's not your money. You can spend anything you want. Just throw the charge card out. In fact, keep raising the debt ceiling as much as you want because you don't have to worry about paying it back. Okay. Uh, it, it's hard for me to sit and, and think that that's all right to do the American people. We'll ask about the debt ceiling in just a couple sure. of seconds because that is going to be a, a huge and important vote. But I want to talk to Debbie Wasserman Schultz about this whole idea of bipartisanship. Is this going to be a situation where <clears throat> Congress gets together and does the people's good, or is this a, a recipe for gridlock? Well, that remains to be seen. I mean, what Democrats will do uh, now that we're in the minority in the House but remain in the majority in the Senate and hold the White House is measure everything that the Republicans propose by whether it creates jobs, turns the economy around, and cuts the deficit. And what is going, what remains to be seen is whether members like Mike Kelly are going to be able to turn their essentially campaign rhetoric into some kind of, uh, of reality because, I, I, with all due respect to his, to his response, there, there isn't any there there. I mean, we haven't heard any concrete proposals. Mm -hmm. uh, Anthony's absolutely right. We, we've only heard uh, 
attacks on what they don't like. Right. We've got to make sure that we continue the progress and the prosperity that we've been moving forward towards. I mean, the S&P finished the year well, you know, up uh, 80, 86%. Right. The Dow up 16%. We've increased manufacturing exponentially. I mean, we've, we're beginning to you know, aggressively turn that economy around. Uh, let's hope they don't squander that. So here's a question for everybody. Uh, the government is funded basically till about March or so. There will be a vote eventually on raising the debt ceiling. Will you vote to raise the debt ceiling? Well, I, I'm going to wait and see uh, you know, where the direction that the Republicans want to take uh, take our, our policy. Mm -hmm. Congressman, I, I voted against this tax cut bill because I thought it blew a hole in, in the budget. And I think the Republicans have come in saying that they're going to not raise the debt ceiling and they're going to allow the full faith and credit of the American people go down the tubes. It's their ship to run now. That's the responsibility. This is <laughs> this is their the you know this is an adult game now. Yeah, and, right. uh, and and and, right. and the, the right. risk. Let me go to Mike high. Kelly. Mike Kelly, this is going to be one of the big votes, and you, you sure. risk uh, having the government come to a standstill. Well, you know, speaking as an adult who's always paid his own way, I mm -hmm. do understand what happens. And raising the debt ceiling to me is absolutely irresponsible. We've been spending money for so long that we don't have and keep saying, well, it's okay. We'll just raise taxes. We'll find it somewhere. Right. Tax revenue comes from people who are working, people who are profitable. It does not come from right. raising tax rates. Michelle Bachman? Uh, I, I, at this point, I am not in favor of raising the debt ceiling. As a matter of fact, I have a petition that I'm urging people to sign at michellepack.com to urge their member of Congress not to raise the debt ceiling because Congress has had a big party the last two years. They couldn't spend enough money, and now they're standing back, folding their arms, saying, oh, taunting us to figure out how are you going to go ahead and solve this big spending <coughs> crisis. Well, so, so it was you're fun willing when they had the credit the card and they were spending down. the money. So you're willing to, well, it's, it's, it's worth it's the risk. It's not good for anyone to shut the government down. It's not good for anyone. <laughs> That's why I think it's important for Democrats who are so willing to spend money to now be a part of trying to figure out how we can be responsible. Uh, uh, so you want, you want, to, be, on, you want to be in charge until on. you're actually in charge. Okay, now you're not so eager for the responsibility. One, one of the first things, we, we were one of the, the first spending. things, excuse me, one of the first things that, uh, that we're going to do is vote to pass the Republican proposed rules package. And in talking about the debt ceiling, the, their proposed rules, and Mike, you talked about in your campaign the importance of one vote. I want to see whether you're going to vote for that rules package that gives Paul Ryan the authority to set the, set the budget limits himself taking away your vote that you talked about that was so precious and taking the right of all of us in the House of Representatives. That having one member set the budget ceiling for the mm -hmm. entire country is absolutely irresponsible and undemocratic. Go ahead. Well, you know, I, so this is what America loves. This is what America loves. Both sides pointing the finger at the other side. No, it's your fault. No, it's your fault. I got to tell it's you something. Fault. When we talk about, when we talk about having adult conversations and we really have to start acting like adults. We've got a huge problem sitting in front of us right now and it's very amusing to wa walk through this. And I got to tell you, from being on the outside all my life, I don't know how in the world you folks go home and look at these people in the eye and say, we've done a great job. We've done a great job. Your country's $14 trillion well, in a red the and we're, no, hold on a we're going to keep steaming. Okay, let me just say something to Congressman Kelly here. First of all, the you folks stuff, now you are one of those folks. And it is your job in the majority party to govern. And the first thing the Republicans did when they took back the House the last time is they drove the government to a shutdown. And I guess from, from what I've heard Michelle say and you say, that's what's going to happen again. But all the you stuff, that's that has to all, end Anthony. today. You got it exactly okay. wrong. Let, hey, Michelle. You got it exactly wrong. That is not what we're looking to do. And you're stating it falsely. We are not looking to shut the government down. No well, one benefits. But at the same had. time, we're not looking <laughs> Looking at wanting to continually raise the debt ceiling. Okay, well, that's something it's, that the at, Democrats at that point it becomes it becomes <laughs> one or the other. Michelle, I don't know what you call it, Michelle, but that's shutting down the government. <laughs> Michelle, let me ask you this because one of the things the Tea Party has talked about is dismantling health care, and we're wondering if, in the end of the day, that ends up being a fool's errand because no matter how many votes you amass in the House, and even if you could get the votes in the Senate, it will face a certain veto, is it worth the effort to try to do it? Of course it is, because Obamacare will bankrupt the country. And so the, you've seen that the more that people learn about Obamacare, the less they like it. It's very costly. It's unwieldy. So we will put forth a clean repeal bill of Obamacare, and you'll continue to see us make that fight, because that's what the American people want us to do. They want The, the real problem in health care is the cost drivers. Obamacare is actually raising the cost drivers. We want to adopt a free market approach to health care, and you'll see us put those free market solutions forward. Even uh, Democrats realize that the deficit is 
a, almost a, it's it's out of control. It's beyond reach. It's this weight that is hanging. Hey, even Democrats. <laughs> where, where, <laughs> the deficit was. Let's remember the deficit was exploded by Republicans. President Bush inherited a record surplus and yes. turned it into a record deficit. So it, it, two wars unpaid for, a prescription drug plan unpaid for, tax cuts unpaid for. So the deficit that we found ourselves in was thanks to the Republicans. Is so, it addressable? Well, look, Harry, it, Harry it if is, I could it, just it, add, there is hang no, on one there second, is hang no on equivalency. Go ahead. Look, 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 I, I, I think that it, it has to be. And I think that there is a lot of room for bipartisan work. I mean, Time Magazine, without much sweat, came up with $100 billion of corporate welfare that they, they identified. I think we can find cuts. Um, I've been working with Jason Chaffetz of, of Utah. We, we have found some cuts that we think. But there's no doubt about it, though. Some of the big things are philosophical questions. The Republicans have philosophically said they don't believe in the guaranteed Social Security benefit. They don't believe in a guaranteed Medicare benefit. Mm -hmm. We know that because, you know, Harry, because they... Harry, Harry right. Anthony continues to make these statements. Now, Michelle, you voted for that in the Republican it's, alternative it's, it's last very year. Important. <laughs> I'm it's sorry. very important right. to remember. Right. Have you that, met the that young guns, President Michelle? President All right, hang, hang on. Hang Harry, on Harry, that's Go Paul ahead. Ryan proposal. Let, finish Harry, your, finish Harry, your thought, since, Michelle. Harry, Harry, since President Obama came into office, we've had over $3 trillion in deficit. We're looking at another $1 trillion in deficit. Let's try to just get our arms around that reality. Right. This if is we can go back massive. To wait, wait, We're hang going on one second. Just the other part of that, there was an economic cataclysm. And, and by the way, you all we just decided to, to give everybody a tax cut for the next Harry, two can weeks. we go back to health care reform once yeah. for one second? Because that's the <laughs> one of the first things that we're going to do this yeah. week. How is this going to get paid for? Well, oh, by the way, which? Which? Uh, 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 if this deficit continues, then the government, can the government... Oh, well, well are, apparently are my Republican to... friends believe the tax cuts for millionaires and billionaires, somehow the bill fairy <laughs> right, pays for right, that. Right, right. I don't but understand how that's supposed to Can we go back to yeah. health care reform quickly. for one second? Oh, because wow. Saturday, the, the health care reform piece that was implemented was we cut prescription drug bills mm -hmm. for senior citizens by 50 percent. We, we've already made sure that young adults until they're 26 can be on their parents' insurance. A, a constituent in my district came up to me a few weeks ago and thanked me for saving her three thousand dollars a year because she could put her two adult children back on that, but back on her insurance. That's what the Republicans are going to be mm -hmm. uh, are going to be proposing to repeal this week. It's not going to happen if it's about jobs and the economy and reducing the deficit, wasting time and money and adding to the deficit right. by repealing health care reform or on the attempt is Harry, irresponsible. Harry, if I could... Hang on, Michelle. Hang on. Harry? I want to get Mike, Mike back in here one second. Mike, you've already taken a look at this. You're not going to take. Uh, the government-sponsored health care program that is available to members of Congress, right? No, I'm not. I'm not. I, I've always paid for my own health care. I mean, you know, I'm, but I come from the private, private sector. Okay, I've been uh, in my whole life. I've been responsible for everything that I do, uh, and I think we have these conversations. And I think this absolutely goes back to the Middle Ages. We're worrying about how many angels we can fit in the head of a pin. We got to start looking at these things. There is a cost with everything involved. My early time here in this in this city is so different than where I come from because I live in a real world where people actually have to use their own money to pay for things. So this idea that you can keep doing this or doing that, and I love this fact that we are going to pay for it. We are not paying for anything, not we in Washington. The people, the American taxpayer pays for everything, and that's what bothers me. There's such a disconnect between this town mm -hmm. and the rest of the world. Right, so this real world stuff is going to get old really fast. This is now your job. This is a serious yeah, business here. This that. is a serious business here <laughs> trying to figure out how you solve big problems. You, yes, oh, it's true. Social Security does does have to be paid right. for. Medicare does have to be you know paid that, for. Me, but this idea, like the real world, yeah, I don't, you're very amusing. these are tough you're problems. Very you, you have never in your life, you have never done anything on your own with your own skin in the game. And I got to tell you something. Why I respect the fact that you're an elected congressman, I do not respect the fact what that you... What do you mean you, I am? We are. Yeah, well, you're, we are. You're I get part sworn of this On the 5th. I, I'll become part of it on the 5th. But I want to tell you something. This has got to stop being about... Who can blame who for what? Look, it sure sounded been like you just did so, that. It sure sounded like you. It's so like us no. versus the real Hang on, gentlemen, gentlemen, hang on. I would hope you folks, had more folks, respect for your constituents. Folks, yeah. Hang on, well, hang on. I I just, that's why I wouldn't have the deficit for All right. Mike has to go beyond. It's time to go beyond rhetoric. All right. Harry, going Harry? beyond campaign slogans, which is all I've yeah. heard today yes, from yes. from Mr. Kelly, right, and yes. is all Ms. Ms. Bachman really ever engages in. It, we have to get into <laughs> deficit reduction, <laughs> job creation, which and turning the economy around. Which all, all that's of that, their measure. All right, <laughs> that's their yardstick. Michelle Bachman, very very quickly, do you Thank see you, Harry. anything that you have in common with your with your friends from the other side of the aisle? 
Uh, I would say if they want to engage in deficit reduction, that's exactly what we want to engage in is deficit reduction. But it's so interesting, Harry. For two years, these were big wild party down spenders, and now they're interested in deficit reduction. What? That's what we'll do because I'm similar to Mike Kelly. My husband okay. and I also started our own business. We also live in the real world. The real world is where America lives. It's not the bubble in Washington, D.C., where they engage in fantasy. Right, right, right. Hang on a and I, what you'll I will see give, happen is I will uh, give Congresswoman Wasserman Schultz the last word. Thank Go you. ahead, very quickly. We went from bleeding 750,000 jobs a month before President Obama took office to last year adding over a million more jobs created in, in last year than the entire Bush presidency alone. We need to continue that progress. We need to hold the Republicans' feet to the fire, and we will. And if the last 15 minutes were any indication, it would be a very <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Thank you Mike, all very, very much. <laughs>